What's poppin' everybody? It's Tay of Catch-22 Radio Show. I got the dopest team in the world with me. Brian got on this ugly jerk shirt, but we still love him. <laughs> Shout out to everybody that tunes in every single Sunday. Yeah, it's Brian D. Boy Davis. I'm in the building. We rocking. Get it in. Catch-22 Radio. Young Drewski in the building. Make sure y'all tune in 3 to 5 every Sunday. Hey, I guess Deej one time for the West Coast. Every Sunday, catch 22. Yeah, let's get it in. Thanks for the West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, y'all? This your girl, Lil Bree, and I'm at Catch 22 Radio Station. Tune into the rap game every Friday to see you, girl, and we rip for H Town. I'm going to stand behind you. Oh. I'm going to stand behind you. <laughs> hey, first, before we go into our interview, I want to say happy birthday, happy birthday uh, Tiffany Haddish. Birth, That's my birth. best friend in my head. Birth. Huh? Birthday. Birth. Bro, what you want to do, D? Let's go. Bert, I'm going to Oh, he said I'm going to stand behind you in that song? I thought he said I'm going to stand behind you. I thought he was talking about standing for some hundreds. See? Got t and everything now. Clarify. Hey, B-King, Kyle doesn't clarify what you said. He clarified what you just said because we don't know what you said. Yes, Bert. Bert, okay. I'm from the South. Bert. 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 Okay. And I spell South with an L. Bert. Okay. I'm from that South side. Whatever. All right, so we have a special guest in the building now, y'all. This is very big for me because I am a religious rap game watcher. I watch the rap game every single time come on, and I get a little too invested. I be mad. I be wanting to fight JD. I done went in his DMs like, bro, what happened? What you mean? What, what, why did you do that? Why did you do that? What? 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 But listen, we have a special guest, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. She is the hardest. I believe so. On this season. Hey. And there's no way that you can say that she's not. I agree. Lil Bree is in the building. Yeah. What's up? Yeah. Yeah. What's happening? We go down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm a big fan. It's only been two episodes. Right. But I was like, bro, this girl is killing it. Right. And this, I was like, I was going to root for it just because she was from Houston. <laughs> and then I was like, bro, she go hard. No, nah, she really is the truth. She go thank hard. you, thank you. You really are the truth. Well, Bree, I'm sorry. Um, I don't have cable, so <laughs> I've seen like little videos of you rapping, which is awesome. But I haven't seen. You know what you can do? You can actually see, you can go. You can actually go on YouTube, YouTube and watch it. Oh. Or you can log into my Uverse account. I, I got. It. That's what I'm gonna do. You can log into my yep. Uverse account. I got Still you, bro. We gonna watch. We gonna watch you every day. Hey, don't Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> this is all alleged. Allegedly. This is all alleged. But look, Bree, what's going on? How you? How you doing? feeling good like just to be putting my city out here once again you know we don't have too many people out of houston that's just doing something for the city so right. like coming back from atlanta then bringing all this back to houston like i'm just so happy and um excited to keep pushing this like as far as possible that's awesome man like I, i'm just well, I'll ask you a question, though, Brad. I'm going to ask you again. So, I want to know, what did Jermaine Dupri say about the Bow Wow Challenge? Because y'all participated. <laughs> <laughs> was it required to get on the show? No, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Next question. Uh, I guess we didn't, we didn't talk about that. Nah, I nah. didn't talk about it. Nah, but Bow Wow is dope, man. So, nah. so did he say, like, when y'all get this record deal and y'all make kids, when you get older, don't act like this. <laughs> <laughs> he said don't do this. Like don't this is like this. the example like of a child prodigy gone wrong. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like he made a lot of hits as a child and then he got older and kinda went. The thing about Bow Wow is that people still talking about him. Come so, on, get in the microphone, man. Get in the mic. <laughs> nah, the thing about Bow Wow is that hey, you might love him or hate him, but people still talking about right. him. Right. This yeah. day and age, that's yeah, all that matters. Yeah, hey, right. They talking right. about you. I mean, are they talking about like another bad creation right now? Like, wow, did I just date myself? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> exactly. But that's exactly what I'm talking I about. I know you know. Like. Another bad another creation. Bad creation was a group that came out After at the same BDD. time as like uh -huh. Criss Cross, oh, yeah. like, okay. way back in the day. Like okay. nobody talking about them now, but people right. are still talking about Bow Wow. Plus, Bow Wow still got a show. You know, he's like, he still money. You know, if y'all watched the first money. episode, he helped out Bree and all the rest of the rappers. You know, right. so yeah. Bow Wow dope. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we just messing with. We like you, Bow Wow. We love you, Bow Wow. I don't retake my statement. You meant that, Drew? I agree. Got a question for you though. Yeah. With Jermaine Dupri having big artists like Criss Cross. And um, you know, a, a while back, do you remember some of that stuff? Where you, how did it feel to meet some of these people that you met? Man, it was crazy. Like, um, one of the first people we got to meet were, uh, was the Brat. 
Right. And I mean, like, you don't have too many female rappers that's just raw and she so herself. Like, she right. never tried to, oh, let me act a certain way. Nah, that's her style. And she was her throughout the whole season. Um, another person, Bow Wow, like, looking at him as a kid on, um, like, Mike right. and stuff like that. And it's like, I'm really in front of these people. It didn't right. hit me until, like, maybe, what, four weeks in. I was still starstruck. I'm like... I'm really here with these great people and right. just to get um knowledge from them and to keep pushing me like it was an amazing opportunity. That is great. You remember some of the Brett songs? Uh, <laughs> like I listened to a couple of them with her and JD but it's just like uh people telling me like backstories on her cuz that wasn't my time. Right. But I knew um like mostly women I looked up to was Queen Latifah and MC Light. So I'm like I know she was in that circle yeah, and then cool. just Looking up her in the house and more information about her it was crazy. That's Dang, dope. so like all them songs is like throwbacks for you. Yeah, yes. like, 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 even oh now. Yeah. Man, look. Yeah. <laughs> hey. yeah. That's why I wanted to ask that, that question because I was a big Criss Cross fan growing up. And I'm a little bit older. I don't say my age, but I'm a little bit older. So I was like, I wonder if those kids. Oh, oh, you're a Criss Cross fan. I'm a Criss Cross fan. So why was you a Criss Cross fan? I'm a Criss Cross fan. I was a Criss Cross fan. How many songs there? A lot of them. They had a couple of them. Couple. Yeah, let's not do that. Let's not like really go into Criss Cross. We don't get something to bring. So I just really want to say. Really want to know, like, with the, the kids coming up in that situation, did y'all have to research those people to really know? You yeah, because I'm be honest with you, we had the episode that came on Friday, um, and Dougie Fresh came through. I yeah. watched Dougie Fresh, I knew he was a beatboxer, but we, everybody else on my season wasn't like as excited. Like, when he walked in, everybody was like, and the manager's like, yeah, it's oh, snap. All us. <laughs> it's all all so it's like, we had to go research on a lot of things because this season, I feel like it wasn't as much playtime. We had to, like, really, really work. And it wasn't as much fun as I feel like the other seasons may have been, but I feel like that's going to help us out more. Right. Because right. a lot of the other seasons, so they're really getting the old school people. They kind of got people they knew. Like, I remember one season they got uh, Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Like, a lot of people know these people, but to get – Dougie Fresh, I don't feel like even people who've been rapping for a long time would get that opportunity. Right. 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 Yeah. I know the managers probably was losing it. They were 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 losing it. So, what would you say uh, was one of your biggest challenges being on Rap Game? Um, not changing having to make sure I stay be myself throughout the whole show. And it was a lot of um, different challenges and times where I got advice from people change or do this and that. And it's like me, I'm so Houston and I'm so Brie at the same time. Right. So it's hard for people to accept that. So it was just Brie, you're going to have to keep being yourself. Don't change for a challenge. Don't change for a contract. Don't change for whatever is thrown at you for right. some money. I was just trying to, that was the hardest thing for me, making sure I do not change for anything. Oh, yeah. So as a young lady, so, what made you want to? rap out of like all things to do one of the main things was um seeing that females are so kind of underrated like on that part in the rapping and you don't see a lot of females in the industry and then to see uh, females that can keep their clothes on as well and get respect in the industry without having to like show their body so for me i was like let me show you that a female can come in the game actually rap don't have to show her body um be myself and make it right. so that was one of my main don't get me gonna show her body Oh, man. You want to see that? No, 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 um, oh, called Big and Nasty. Nasty. We'll oh. talk, you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> so, at her age, I don't think that she can be with Thick and Nasty. So I don't, I don't need okay. her to be with Thick yeah, and Nasty, but she needs us on stage. Oh. Our presence. Oh, we can get a oh, new name, name for her. For her. Just when Save we go and on. Sanctified for her. Save and sanctified. <laughs> Thick and Nasty. And Thick and Nasty with everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Thick yeah. and Nasty if you're nasty. So, um, <laughs> you know, we, we are. <laughs> We're background rappers. We're background rappers. So why is she looking at like <laughs> again? Everybody that comes up here, when they look, what is a background <laughs> rapper? Okay, look. Background. So I'm explaining to you. You gonna spit your verse, right? No, no. I'm gonna be spitting my verse in the background, right? Yeah. 
So we gonna intertwine our verses to where it's, <laughs> like like, it's two different verses, but it's gonna sound like one. Like you know what I'm saying? Like Flo Tree. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, that's deep. But you know, why can, why can singers have background singers? But she can't. Have she can't have I mean, I see people rap. do the ad libs. You know, the yes. No, 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 don't well, go if you say no to Dick and Nasty, you gotta say no to Feature and Brian. You can't oh, yeah, have no to with Feature and Feature and Brian. You can't <laughs> do that. I'm still trying. I'm gonna get out there one day. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta put yourself out there like Dick and Nasty. I see y'all do it every time. I'm really proud of y'all. They y'all y'all, y'all, y'all really gonna time. make it with no music. It's we don't need music. We don't need no music. So how did, how did this whole rap game thing come about? Like, Was it your manager? Was it something that you hit somebody and say, look, I really need to get in this? Um. Well, it started out just me, you know, in the city just doing shows, rapping, but I never, I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't think this was going to take off or I didn't want it to take off as much because rapping wasn't my main focus for a minute. But then I'm like, okay, I can actually do this. People actually like my music. Yeah. So I'm like, let me keep pushing it. And we got hit up from um, the company. And I'm like, I didn't think it was real. I thought it was fake. I'm like, stop playing with me. whoever in my email. But it was actually real. And the process of just getting interviewed, um, they really like this because, like I said, I was just being me. I don't know how to, um, the other kids on my season got on the show, but in the interview, I was just blunt, straightforward. And what else we talked about in the interview? We were just... Yeah, I mean, just being herself. Just being myself, and I think they really liked that. Just genuine. Uh, just I mean, genuine I mean, throughout the whole process, yeah. and they really loved it. Yeah, I know, I've seen watching you in the show, like, you're very humble. Yeah. And really laid back as you know that you bomb. You know, <laughs> like, you know you're you're killing it. That. Yeah, so she just like Rob just back here chilling. Yeah, it really was chill. your manager who was sitting over there. He was the one over there getting on. Oh, yeah. Hey, bro, you number one in here. You feel me? <laughs> you're number you one. Need let, you, you need to clap. <laughs> you need to let him know. <laughs> yeah. like, See, and I got I got flack for that. And the thing is funny though because I said that we were in the privacy of their room. You mm-hmm. know, I wouldn't go out in front of all the other kids saying that. Right. And the thing is, I know how humble she is. And that's great. And I always look at it like this. Brianna, you know, that's her real name. Brianna can be as humble as she wants, and I love that. And every time she goes out, be that person. But a little Brie, destroy. Right. Every single time you destroy. Every single time you get on that mic. Lil' Brie is a killer. No nothing. Just go out there. Especially especially because you know. Because you know she can. And rap is a competition. Rap is a competition. It's a competition. It's it's always going to be a competition no matter how many people. It's like, I just want to make good music. You always going to be compared. You always going to have to compete. Especially as a woman. They're always, as soon as they see, you know, when she goes out, she had a little small performance the other day. And they didn't really know who she was. It's like older dudes were in the hood off like 1960 somewhere. Oh, you know, I mean, yeah. Well, I so, know you know, Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So you know, as soon as she comes in, you know, it's gonna be a bunch of dudes. They gonna judge her from jump. Yeah. That's so right. she can't be, you know, humble Brie right now. Mm-hmm. That has to be Lil Brie. That gotta be right. Queen Kong. Right. You know, she just has two different personas. You know. Right. Yeah. But that's all it yeah, is. Yeah, I learned how to turn the switch on and off. Yeah. Like maybe not on the show as much, but I know when. I'm time, it's time to perform, oh, then it's like, it's like yeah. Beyonce with her Sasha Fierce exactly. stage. Like, yeah. she's so right. chill. Then when she hit the stage, it's a totally different totally person. Different. So that's with me. Like, I know when to turn it on and I know when to turn it off. Because I see a lot of people, you know, they cocky. And I feel like yeah, it's Lex. Right. Yeah. yeah, and then you cocky for a minute, then you fall right back off because right. of your cocky. See, I couldn't have been your manager. They'd kick me off because <laughs> I'd been like, oh, y'all suck. Yeah. Oh, y'all you not know. good. I didn't see the first uh, episode. I pretty yeah. much got yeah. that. Look, look, look. look. <laughs> Look, for, me, for me, for the kids, it's character building. I'm telling you early so you don't hear it later. But Jermaine Dupree gave them, like, all of them were five. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, look, 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 JD, you're lying. She was a two. He was a one and no, a half. They, 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 five, it's, it's a one through five. Oh, my God. Yeah, Bree got number one. Yeah, Bree got number one, and then the other three kids got, like, number five. Good. It was just the first episode. But that's a tie. Like... <laughs> that's a time. The he's, still, he's still everybody wins type. That's not everybody. No, they sleep it on the list. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, I mean, no, everybody no gets one. a lot better <laughs> throughout the show. Right. Right. Everybody gets a lot better. And the challenges, you have certain challenges that like really showcase the skills of one artist and maybe right. another. I so, hope it gets better. But, you know, once we heard that Jalil beat, like, oh, the first episode, yeah. I just knew. That track I, is hard. Too. That track yeah. is yeah. Hard. Yeah. hard. And I just knew. And the funny thing about it, they didn't show her entire rap. 
Like she goes. That's why people are like, man, he's losing his damn mind. It's like because she really went in. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I, like, she we was, were mad. I don't know if y'all know yeah. Jenny off the show. Yeah, yeah. we were but mad like, at Jenny too. She said that Ricky the first was not the only person. Yeah, she <laughs> Ricky was yeah like not the she only when we, we first met, I'm like, if you look at the other seasons, they kind of had like something to work with. Right. They had a mic, they had a beat, or they had a table to throw or jump over something. But we were standing in the grass with JD with his sunshades on, Jenny with hers, and they were just like. It was in grass. I'm like, I can't grab nothing. I can't go jump over a table. So it was kind of hard to work with. And they were like, we were kind of dry. So that pissed me off. I'm like, not on TV. I'm not about to look like this. <laughs> so when I get mad, I think I write better. So mm -hmm. I just was like putting all my anger into which I was just thinking about what she said. Yeah. I'm like, oh, no, not on TV. This is not about to happen. So um, where did we go? We went outside. Yeah, and outside. I started writing. They didn't show that. But I yeah, started writing. Right. I went crazy. And I was like, I got to kill everybody's first episode because I don't want to. You know, make myself look like I did something wrong. So right. you're gonna be like the Mary J. Blige rapper. Because every time she upset or she heartbroken, yeah. you get yeah. the best yeah. 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 yeah, I think so, she's getting divorced, so she's gonna give us a good album next time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, y'all. <laughs> did you just make you just like stop completely? You just don't know how to come back from that. I don't know how to come back from that. Yeah. All right, so I'll put you on the spot. Who would you say is your favorite uh -oh. rap game artist besides yourself? Uh -oh. <laughs> no, we've had this question. Dang, before. it's a lot. I'm, oh, that's hard. Um, oh, you talking about, oh, you're talking about overall. Overall. Like, overall, overall. Out of everybody. Yeah. Okay. Um, I got this. They got to go to D Trinata. Yeah. Yeah, D Trinata, she took. Um, yeah, I had to get on with her because right at the gate, like, she was herself. Like I said, I love people who come on there and you can tell they being themselves. Right. But she was just spitting hard. And she was hard. She was hard. But I have a favorite from every season, so that's kind of hard. But I'll say D. is probably in the top. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And who's your least favorite? Oh, oh, man. Man. oh, I like your gut. Hey, he don't sell. Oh. I want to hear who your least favorite is. Uh, Tally. Uh, no, I'm asking me a next but I, No, I miss it. No Tally. comment. T um, yeah, no comment. She <laughs> <laughs> wanted to say something. We got to get that politically correct now. See, everybody came on there with a purpose. Okay, so. But and I love like everybody. I said, the reason why, I'm going to be honest, that is my honest uh, answer. I don't have a... Like, I don't dislike anybody. Why yet? Because I don't have any beef with anybody. But I'm just saying, it's hard. This show is hard. Yeah. They make it seem like it's yeah. easy. But I'm like, if you get on there and you can tolerate the stuff that we had to go through, then I'm cool with you. Unless yeah. you got two right. beef or something. But if you can get on that show and deal with the, the cameras yes. and the in your face when you emotional and they like right yeah. here in your face, yes. or you can deal with them editing the show a certain way and you might not like it. Right. So I say... Until I beat with somebody right now, everybody cool. I like everybody. I like that. I like that. Uh, with you being a female artist, I didn't want to ask this question. So I know you heard Motorsport with Nikki and and uh, Cardi. Yeah. Who had the best verse? Okay, in my opinion, I say Nikki. Yeah, thank you. But thank Cardi you. had a turn up. Her verse was more turn up. But if you listen to Nikki, it was more wordplay in there, like exactly. coming out the jump. Exactly. Uh, what did she say? Watch a man. You, you should watch, watch your mouth. mouth. Yeah. It's Chris. <laughs> yeah. And then it's the mouth. Right off the jump, she had me. Her words um, was really. Her words are crazy. <laughs> but then Cardi, she had catchy and funny lines yeah. that you can remember more. But Nikki, yeah. I had this but conversation. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, that's people why people forget, forget that. that. No, they really just been that's what I was just about to say. They tear down Nikki now because you know Cardi out. But I'm like, don't forget. Like, Nikki she got it. Raining. And yeah. I feel like in that song, she knew she wasn't going to put no whack verse on there. Right. Because she wants to let everybody know, like, yeah, I'm still here. I'm still here. I and just I just had this conversation with somebody this weekend. And I was like, half the time, y'all don't like it because her lyrics go over y'all head. Yeah. Like, That's she right, didn't, she didn't say, understand the Uzi, the Uzi lie. All of your friends can be dead. You can get hit with that Uzi. Uzi. Yeah, yeah, she didn't kill her. I was like, yeah, you're not getting through it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first thing I caught. Yeah, every yeah. Uzi kid to lie. She had lines. All, all in that. between it. Right. Cardi was more just straightforward with like, you know, it's straight up. Right. Yeah, I, I hate the fact that sometimes I feel like they only let one female in the game at a time. Like, right. That was the look, said is nobody can come <laughs> together. We thought that. I know that I really felt like I thought that until we heard Ladies Night the other night. Yeah. And it was Missy, it was the brat, it was Left Eye, it was Angie Martinez, all on one song. All of them had a buzz, all of them was doing the thing. The thing is, it's not many women want to be rappers right now. Like, right. they feel like you have to sell yourself or you have to do. But in the 90s, you had Lady of Rage, you had Yo-Yo, you had Queen yep. Latifah, you had yep. MC Light. You had so many women that were selling shows. Like, you had went all women tours. So why, do, no they, so, so why do y'all think that that changed? Oh. Ooh. 
I, that's a good one. I don't know. I mean, hip hop has always been a male dominated right. type thing. It's always been. I mean, right now, like one of my favorite female rappers out is Rhapsody. You know, Rhapsody's she's hard. she's hard and she's nominated for a Grammy right now, mm -hmm. but she's not getting anywhere. Commercial the the, the, yeah. the commercial. You know, yeah. people talk about Cardi and Cardi cool. But Cardi has to show more to me, you know. Yeah. We like she has Bodak Yellow, but it's like, okay, what else? You, you think she wrote that? Mm -hmm. I'm <laughs> <laughs> That's the rapper. Oh, That's the rapper. Wrote and Bodak Yellow. Yeah, I was thinking about. I'm like, if you listen to her older song, the the way it's she's saying it is totally. It's kind of off like, yeah. yeah, it's, it's off like, Okay, it's so like rehearsed, but, but that don't mean she didn't write it. That just means she well, took she his cadence. You know what I mean? Like, like she, like no, he, he probably said, "Hey, you, you gonna rap it, but rap it like this." Well, like, you know what I mean? Like, I can get like, cause I can write it. Yeah. But if I give the cadence is what what everybody's so hype about. Like her lyrics on it wasn't just like stupid dope. It was just her cadence and the way when she came in, yeah. it was like, oh, okay. But like, I mean, cadence, and that's the same thing as 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 like as the Migos. The Migos really don't be saying extra hard stuff. It's just the way, they the way that the they, way they, they they format they, they the, the song. And right. the Mad Libs. Yeah, yeah, okay, right. mama. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going? What's next for Lil Bree? What do you have coming up? Right now, I'm just trying to um, push this. Like, I don't want to stop. I see a lot of people on the rap game, um, or some of the kids on the rap game. You know, they get the buzz for a minute, and then, you know, they living off the rap game buzz and they fall off. I want to just take this as far as possible. I want to um, get my name out there more, not just in Houston. Um, but internationally, mm -hmm. I want to just keep doing shows. I, I want to do, like, that's my goal, to do a, um, a show out of the country. Like, just keep working as much as possible. Because if I stop here, then I'm going to flop and then just be another rap game kid. And right. I don't want to be that. I want to be the biggest rap game kid. All right. I think that's lit. I feel that. What, so is the music out now? Y'all holding the music? How yeah, that so work? I'm releasing, like, sometimes singles here and there. But I want to work on a big project and get that on, okay. you know, get that rolling. <laughs> Oh. And get, I want to get like, see me, I'm like I said, I'm so Houston. I want to get like a song with just all the Houston legends. I want to get Slim Thug, Zero, Paul Wall, and just make a another big Houston anthem. I know that's gonna be hard, wait, wait, but I want to work on that now. Tell them about the episode this week. Oh, though. yeah, so stay gotta, tuned. Uh, tell tune into the next episode Friday. Um, I was so Houston on that episode. We got to work with um, one of the best producers out there right now, in my opinion, Zaytoven. Yeah. And we get to customize and make our own beat from scratch with him. And you know, I made that so Houston. Um, so stay tuned for the episode. It's going to be dope. I'm ready for this. The this. song is called, just so get your own Oh, the song is called Screwed, Screwed Up Forever. forever. So it's going to be so hey, special for the city. I'm ready. Screwed Up Forever. I want to hit it. Not miss this week's episode. Yeah. I, know, I really want you to do that with I, I think sure. Kiki, I think that'll be amazing for the city. I, I think that we all need to come together one time. And yeah. it'll be amazing for somebody like you to go ahead and bring everybody. Oh, out. bring everybody! I feel like they, cause everybody's good. so separated right now. I yeah. feel right. like you already know. I feel like Houston no, is no love no more, like right. how it used to be. Yeah. So if everybody could come back together and get that back rolling, the all screwed right. up click and all that, that would be crazy. I just yeah. feel like it's a separation because it's old Houston and it's new Houston. New, right. Like right. Old, new Houston exactly. don't sound like old Houston, so it's all. like we're not going to embrace it. Like. Like we would, exactly. like normally. And I feel like, like we pushed that. Like when I went out to Atlanta, when I was listening on the radio, all I heard was Atlanta rappers. You mm -hmm. didn't hear no Houston no rappers Houston out rappers. here. All we play is Atlanta music, mm -hmm. unless it's at night and they playing some screw music. So mm -hmm. I'm like, um, when I went to Atlanta, a lot of people didn't understand the screw music or they didn't understand what I was talking about. And I'm like, okay, we push this and get this out here more. Like Atlanta, like the Atlanta rappers taking over. I was like, we can do that as well. Yeah, it's well, a, it's well, a unity. But, there's but, also a unity in Atlanta. Too. That's what I'm saying. So, <laughs> so in Atlanta, the older Atlanta embraces. Like you never hear like Ti. Or Jeezy exactly. saying, "Oh no, we don't rock with them. Like they, they from our cloth. They, yeah. they, they, they proud of they our music. Pushing. So yeah. let's go. Like I'm riding with y'all. Like y'all about to take over the city. Like right. it, you just don't get they that. Steady you know, I they, you don't get that at all. It's like it's so separated. And I'm like, when I went out there, it was like, oh, we used to play it out. And like y'all only have two big people and da da da. I'm like, okay, it's I time think to a change lot of that. It comes then. from the history of Houston hip hop that it was initially separated by sides. Yep. So you yeah. had the north side and you yeah. had the south side. Yes. That that so you know so as time went on when those dudes got older they started being cool 
but it took a while for that to get yeah, together. Yeah, because growing up in that, it makes you feel that way. Like, even now, yeah. I still don't go to the north side behind it. It's like, to be honest, it just, it's, like I said, it's, it's, it's like built in me. Like, so it's nothing. Because I don't have a problem with the north side. It's just it's, where I'm from is home. So, yeah. It's just too far. But it's, no, but it's actually like, y'all, y'all. No, it's real. Houston like, is like, two different cities. It's two different cities. Like, if you leave the south side and go to the north side, it's everybody like, dress so different. We, they talk different. It's like, it's different music. It's just, it's different. Like, and I think that's the biggest thing. I think that has caused, like, you know, we were in Atlanta for almost four months. It's it's similar to Houston, but it's smaller. It's exactly. like you you right here here. Right. The north side, like, yeah, whoa, yeah. we got to yeah. drive an hour, hour just yeah. to get yeah. to the damn north side. So so one more question. I have a question about this too, especially when I'm talking to a Houston artist. Is that um, do y'all feel like us still embracing that culture from back then and not changing it and finding the new culture is hurting us? Yeah, I feel like because we're in the middle now, like. I feel like Atlanta, they kept pushing, like you said, the old heads mixed with the younger kids, they kept pushing it. They didn't stop and say, oh, well, y'all not doing it right, so we got to start over. Right. I feel like now we're trying to start over. And it's like, nah, let's keep pushing it and blend both together and yeah. that'll, you know, make something. So I feel like that's what's hurting us to stop it in the middle because that's like a big gap. We have Beyonce and Travis, to me, like the biggest two yeah. right now, if right. I'm not. Yeah, no, no, you're right. And I'm like, we could have more. So much talent in Houston. Like it when is. I saw Kelly Rowland had her TV show where she got the girl group, she didn't get nobody from Houston. And I'm like, wow, it's so much talent here, and it's just getting overlooked. Right. Right. But, you, but you want to know why? Like even even new artists are like, well, I rap, but you know, it don't sound like that 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 Houston. That, that Houston stuff. Like, yeah. But but so when I when I old head hear that, it's like, well, we kind of paid the way for you to. To make music and to be there, so, so don't 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 I mean, just disrespect it like like right, what we did something. wasn't great. I think it's yeah. a generation. You know what I mean? It so we, it it's, it's a generational gap, and that's why not to keep plug, plugging this week's episode. You know, she's the new school, but then I come from an older generation of that that music, the screw to that, and I think what was what was accomplished this episode was the merging. I think she's so fresh, but she has such an old soul, right. mm -hmm. and it's gonna be older. Like she, her biggest fans tend to be grown adults. Like yeah. they love her, mm -hmm. but then the younger kids they love her too because she's so humble. She's so this. But her, right. her so, rap, are very, her her, her uh, lyrics are very mature too. Yes, right. her lyrics are Especially extremely mature, mature, but she's mature. very palpable. Like people can understand it. They can they can feel her. And I think this screwed up forever song. Just please watch. It, yeah. it's, it's about. Yeah. And one thing else I want to say about like my younger my generation now because they feel like what's the hype right now. Right. So nobody True. knows about Houston music except for you. Like we understand the, the, the grills, the lean, the, uh, the, the, the swangers, period, all of that, we understand it. When I went out to Atlanta, they like, that ain't what's popping. Like it's the that way and lit and all of that. Right. And I'm like, okay, well let me push Houston as much as possible, whether they like it or not. And I did that to the fullest. So I'm like, hopefully, it buzzes and somebody's like feeling it right. and we can bring that back because it was so Atlanta. Yeah, right. and I'm, I'm really watching a lot of people. We were just at a uh, listening party the other day and Lil Kiki walked in. So me just paying attention that they watching the kids and they trying to see who coming out to yeah. try to get a single with. So that is something y'all should do is to listen. Oh, definitely. I want to push a, a feature with the biggest Houston artist. It could be like a huge site for everybody yeah. on it. And like bring that back. And just so. make sure we there. We got yeah, to come see that. We got to come see that. Yeah, we got to I'm wearing my thing nasty shirt. Oh, Definitely. Jesus. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we, hey, hey, I plan, but we do have sweatshirts to say thick and nasty. They do. They do. <laughs> they really do. Yes. Oh, now. So, I had another question um, in regards to like your career. Now, your manager on the show is the, you, you're the only one that manager isn't their parent. Right. So how did that how did that affect you? How did that make you better or um, what did it Because I wasn't babied, I feel like. Right. And I seen the other kids were, but it's like, I feel like, you know how some people have their husband as their manager or their wife? I feel like it's always going to, you got to separate yeah. the two sometime. And it's like to be up under your parent all the time, you're going to get agitated right. or your mom going to be a mom and then she's trying to be a manager. So right. to me, it helped me because I'm like, okay, I can separate the two. I don't have to sit on the show and be baby by my mom or then she want to turn into a manager I feel like that's too stressful so you know I like it where it's separated I could come home to my mom talk to her about stuff that we talk right. to our parents about then go to my manager and it's serious right because I don't I don't like mixing the two I feel like they helped me a lot on the show as well. right. so seeing your mom on the show how is she doing matter of fact yeah she's doing way, oh, better. way better and like mm -hmm. she's my biggest supporter and keeping me up like um I know a lot of people tell me, like, are your parents supportive of you rapping? A lot of people say that their parents were never supportive. But even though, like, I don't think that was her main thing for me to be a rapper, but she let me do it. And right. now she's, like, not regretting anything because it's taking off. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, one more last question. I got something. I've been waiting for you to come out. You lie. Yeah. What about what? You, so you said, said one more last question. question. Six questions like, ago. Six questions. <laughs> okay. But I just want to know how y'all met each other. How did the manager oh, thing? You know, I guess come I in? can. So um, I used to. I guess I get in here. So yeah, I used to run this program um, in Third Ward called Workshop Houston. And what the program did, uh, we provided like after school activities. We had a fashion program, we had a bike program, uh, we had a, a educational program, and we also had a music program called the Beat Shop. So basically we taught kids how to like make their own beats, do their own rhymes and all sorts of stuff like that. So that was Brie. Brie came, you know, Brie was a, again, quiet, shy girl. And you know, she just kind of came and just started like hanging out. And one of the dudes who worked for me at this time, his name was Bass Heavy very talented dude, you know, he just like, was like, hey, I really want you to really focus on this. He gave her a writing exercise one day, and it was about shoes? Yeah. Yeah, it was just like, I want you to write about shoes, but just make it rhyme or something like that. So he hit me up, he was like, Rich, come check this out. And then I heard the song, and she made the beat. She used like an old um, Barbara Streisand sample and made the beat for the song. It was a song called Shoe Game Crazy. And I heard it, and she was what, 12, 11, 12? Yeah. And from that point forward, I just, you know how you, you just hear certain people and you just no, know. Right. You no, just, no. I mean, y'all saw the first episode. Yeah. You heard within the first few bars. And I just said, yo, we got to push this because the biggest thing I can always say about me, I just always believe in these kids. Right. And like, a lot of these kids from communities like Third Ward, Fifth Ward, they already stigmatized. Like, oh, you're a certain way, you're this. And it's like, nah, like, let's take this rap stuff for real. Like, right. yeah, let's agree. really do it. Let's, let's really, and it's not just like you going up there and trying to dance or nothing. Like, the girl's lyrical as hell. So right. that's kind of like what we get, you know. So working with, you know, the dude bass, uh, he really like just taught her the, the, the specifics of just sh song structure and everything. Mm -hmm. Then I was the one who just worked with her performing wise and taking her places. And, you know, as y'all saw on the show, like go harder, all that good stuff. So, but yeah, man, it's just like doing that. And then, but she was before me, bass, workshop, Houston. This girl was always talented. So you know, we just provided the resource for right. her to just show that that talent. So that's what. Right. 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 So, Brie, you are now family. Yeah. And seeing as you are a family, um, all the younger females in my family, I make them repeat after me. Oh. <laughs> so you're gonna have to repeat after me. You ready? I, I didn't know this was coming. Here we go. Say Wait. boys. Boys. Yucky. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> Yucky. Yeah, you take that Yucky. Ill. Ill. Cooties. Cooties. All right. So that's, that's how you approach them when they approach you. Boys, yucky, ill, cooties. Yep. Yep. I gotta make approach. you walk away. <laughs> Oh, you can just give a shirt that says "Boys Yucky Ill Foods" oh. and just do it like this. Yeah. Go get a catch food t-shirt and yeah. give it to them. Yeah. And put that on the front. Well, for any any shows or anything coming up, anything? Um, right now, um, this one crazy story hit me. It was was a crazy. It was like special. A lady emailed me and she was like, uh, "My daughter and I've been living in a hotel for five months because of Hurricane Harvey," and she was like. This will make her day for you to come perform at her birthday party. And I'm like, oh, definitely, I will be there. Because a lot of people don't know what we went through. Like, they hear it and they yeah. see it. But right. to literally yeah. go through Hurricane Harvey, that was wild. So that's one of my main things that I'm focusing on now. Um, but right now, I'm just trying to push my music in the studio as much as possible and I, just put myself out there. Yeah, we actually going to do a toy drive for oh, Hurricane Harvey. Yeah. Yeah. So we so, might need to link up with you and oh, make that, that happen. Like, we'll, yeah. make, we'll make it happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, let's make, make, make that happen. Let's make it happen. I'm ready for yeah, that. For sure. yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for no, sitting down with us. You've been with us for a long time now. Yeah. Okay. Been the whole hour. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> with you, well, thank you so much. Now, before you go, tell everybody where they can find you on social media. So you can find me on Instagram at the Real Little Bree, and that's for everything else: Twitter, YouTube, the Real Little Bree. So thank y'all. Yeah. 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 Thank All you right. so much. Come back whenever you feel like. Yeah, if you in the city Every on a Sunday, just pop, up. <laughs> just pop we up. We get excited to see people. We do. <laughs> and um, if you have any performances, we'll show up. Definitely. Call us. And have the backup vocal. <laughs> no, no, no. Bring, bring. You're you no. doing a good job yeah. now, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. No, okay. no, no, no. no I did it too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Bree and Reg, for coming through. I really appreciate it. Now we're about to get into a mix with DJ Anthrax. So when we come back, we have another special guest in the building. It's Cash Show to Radio Show. Let's see.
So I'm cleaning my circle like washing dishes. Keep a few riders who bound to get it. They say that I chain cause my pocket's thicker. They rather me struggle and fall to pieces. Told my mama don't stress. Unless you stressing about the house you gon' get. Unless you stressing about the diamonds I pick. Unless you stressing about the bag, not the cost. Rep in Texas, put a grill in my mouth. Tomorrow, I promise. Let me be honest. When I get a bag, I'm gon' blow it. When I get a rollie, I'm gon' show it. Tomorrow, I promise. Let me be honest. Pray for better days. Now we can't complain. You should be ashamed if you full of hate. Tired of waiting. I ran out of patience. No destiny change. Child. Nothing was catered to me, nothing was catered to me. I put in that work, look at the outcome, it's greater than everything I wish to be, that I wish to be.